What's up guys? It's Rayvon from Love Lola. Welcome back. So today we are going to be making the cutest little backpack. It's the Natalie by Shambhala. How cute is this bag? It's adorable. I think they just celebrated a one year anniversary for this bag. So congratulations Shambhala for this pattern. The patterns are written very well. They're easy to understand and it comes together pretty quickly. So yeah, this is the Nathalie. Super cute. I think it's like the perfect size for a backpack. Try it on for you. Probably should have got my step stool. I'm a short little thing. So cute, right? I love it, I love it, I love it. It's pretty compact, but it has these snaps on the side that open up to make it a pretty decent size. It has a snap closure on the front. And then there's also a zipper on the inside. You like it? I know you like it. You want to make it? I know you want to make it. Let's go. Let's go make it. Also, just a quick reminder that all of my videos, if you look down in the description box, I'm going to have a link to where you can get the pattern, a link to where you can get all the materials that I used in the video. I'm also going to have timestamps. Last but not least, I break down the cost of the bag. All right, grab your flap strip and the strip for your connectors, turn them over, mark a line down the middle, long way, and take your connector, fold it in towards that line, and clamp. Okay, now for your flap strip, you're going to grab some double-sided tape. and lay it right by the line that you drew on both sides of the line. Peel it off and just fold material into that line. Make a mark where it's indicated in the instructions and bend so that you can get a crease. Once you've got a crease, just go ahead and slide your O-ring in and fold under. Clamp. Go ahead and attach some double-sided tape. I'm going to do two rolls right outside the middle. Grab your front flap and we're going to place this um, strip centered down the middle of that, fl of that um, flap. Okay, once you have it where you want it, we're going to go to the machine and we're going to top stitch in an eighth um, and just follow the directions for where you need to stop. I'm also going to grab my um, connectors while I'm over there and get these top stitched as well at an eighth seam allowance. Now go ahead and grab your other flap side and we're going to use the pattern to get our mark for our snap. Next, we're told to glue our two flat panels together. So for this uh, pattern, the edges are gonna be exposed. So that's kind of cool. That's different. So you can use whatever kind of um, glue that you have. If you've got some of this advanced um, craft glue, Beacon 3-in-1, this would be perfect for this. If I had more time, I would use this. This stuff is the truth, <laughs> baby. If you need some fabric to stick together forever, this is it. But you have to let it sit for about 15 minutes before you attach it, and I just don't have time, so uh, this is going to be fine. All 
right, and now we're just gonna get it as even as possible. So this next step is optional, but if you want to have a really professional looking bag, I do recommend it. I'm gonna do it. Um, just because when you look to the side, I guess it depends on your vinyl, but sometimes when you look from the side, you can see, you know, it's not the same color as the front of the vinyl. So I don't want to send out a bag looking like that, looking kind of unfinished. So I'm going to go ahead and add um, some edge coat. First, I'm going to do a coat with the uh, base coat dense. Yes, there are tools that are made for this, but mine just got really gunky. And so, um, yeah, so this is what I'm improvising with. It's cool. Which one? Which one? Okay, I'm going to close my eyes and shuffle it and put it behind my back. And you pick a hand. I feel like you pick my right hand. Bet. That's what I wanted anyway. Good choice. The sample pack, I will put a link below where I got it from, but it just has a, it's a great selection of um, sample colors. See, doesn't it just look so much better than leaving it exposed? It just really takes it up a notch. Okay guys, grab your two side pieces and your bottom panel. Place your bottom piece right side touching with one of your side panels. Clamp. Go stitch at one fourth the seam allowance. Press your seam allowance towards the bottom and top stitch at one eighth of an inch. Okay, now grab your other side piece and place it right side touching with the bottom panel and we're gonna do the exact same thing. Head over to the machine and sew it together at one fourth of an inch seam allowance. Flip it and top stitch. Okay, so grab your front panel piece and grab your pattern so that you can find where we need to mark um, to place our snap. Make sure that you reinforce the back with a piece of stabilizer. Okay, let's head over to the machine and top stitch where indicated in the instructions. Okay, so right now I am just following the directions and measuring from the outside of my flap in to figure out the placement for my handle. And more double-sided tape. All right, now we're going to draw a line as indicated in the directions. Whoopsie! Don't forget to put your rectangular rings on your handle. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and add our square D rings before we attach this. You see how they have the little line right there? I want to make sure that that does not show when the bag is made, you know, because it's going to be like this. So to make sure that it doesn't show when you put this on, you need to put it where the, the first one you put on, make it where that line is away from you. Perfect. Little things like that bother me. Grab your double-sided tape. Grab that stabilizer piece and place it on the line. And now we're gonna sew around this entire piece at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and reinforce our handle with some rivets. But stop, wait and watch the next minute before you proceed. Okay guys, so when you are putting in these holes for your handle, you are not supposed to include the main panel piece. You need to push that out of the way. 
as you can see, I, <laughs> I included mine. So, uh, yeah, so just take your time. Don't include that panel piece. But, you know, it's cool. It's cool. I'm going to work it out. Um, I'm just going to grab a couple of pieces of stabilizer, punch some holes in it, and I'm going to grab um, a couple of small rivets. And I'm just going to add it to the panel like decorations, you know? I think it would be cute because what I can't do is start all over, okay? I can't do it. So, uh, yeah, this will work. Okay, now let's go ahead and get those rivets attached to the handle, and the flap should be included. Apply the rivets as close as possible to the rectangular rings. Sammy suggested that we add rivets to the corner of the support piece, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Grab your pattern piece so that you can find the placement of your strap connectors. Again, I got ahead of myself, and so I did connect my strap connectors a little bit different from the instructions. So make sure that you go and read over that really quick before you, um, before you do this part. She has a cool way. It's a little bit different from your normal way of adding the strap connectors. But I, um, yeah, I got ahead of myself and I missed that. Okay, so at this point, I've taken the strap connector and I've cut it in half. And then I've added a rectangular ring to each one. And now I, um, I went and basted it on the bottom. And also I added a seam right underneath the ring. And now I'm going to place them where we've marked. And I'm going to baste it to the panel. I'm going to take a moment to get my name tag attached. Because if not, I'll forget. I'm just going to add it to the center of that support panel. Love it. Find the mid piece of your gusset and mark it on both sides. Go ahead and make some snips so you can get around those curves. Oh yeah. Go ahead and reinforce your strap connectors with a couple of rivets. Okay, now with your panel right side up, place your gusset right side down. Use those center marks to make sure that they're matching up. And then we are going to start from the center and pin up both sides. Now, once you're finished, you're going to notice that the gusset is a little bit longer than the panel. Don't freak out like I did. She did it on purpose. It's okay. We're going to trim it down later. Go ahead and grab your other main panel and let's get it connected to the gusset as well. Let's get those attached at one fourth inch seam allowance. All right, moment of truth. Let's get baby girl turned out. Okay, yes. Oh, she cute. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, she's cute. Oh, she's sexy. Sexy, sexy, sexy. Sorry, I just, I really get excited about these bags. <laughs> she looks good. All right, so just take a minute to play around with it. You know, finger press it. Try to get your seam smoothed out as much as possible. Super cute. I think I love her. Okay, now let's go ahead and cut off those extra bits of the gusset. Perfect. Okay guys, so Sammy does give instructions for using a zipper facing. I did omit that part because I was feeling a little bit lazy today, but I do encourage you to go and read that. It is definitely a technique that, um, that wouldn't hurt for you to learn it. But yes, I am just going to place my zipper pocket lining two inches down from the top of one of the lining pieces. Then I'm gonna measure down one inch from the top of the zipper pocket panel and I'm gonna draw a line about seven inches long, centered. Then 
I'm going to move my ruler down half of inch and draw another line seven inches long. Then I'm going to go connect them on the sides. Okay, now go stitch right on top of those lines. Now you're gonna make a line long way down the middle of that rectangle. And when you get to about one fourth of an inch from both corners, you're going to draw a diagonal line, kind of like a V. Grab a seam ripper or some scissors and cut along that line. Now carefully snip those tiny lines, making sure that you don't cut your thread. Pull your zipper pocket through. Finger press it as best that you can, but if you are able to apply heat, go ahead and do that. Okay, I've got a number five zipper and I have cut my zipper tape at about nine inches. All right, I'm gonna get my pull put on and then I'm gonna place my zipper so that it is opening to the right and closing to the left. Today I'm gonna be using some double-sided tape to um, kind of hold my zipper tape to the panel. I've also got a few pins in there. You know, just do what you gotta do to get your zipper tape um, lined up as neat as possible. Oh, and in case you're wondering, uh, I did decide to elongate my zipper pocket a little bit. So that's that extra material hanging out the bottom. All right, let's go top stitch around the whole thing. Pull the bottom of the zipper pocket up to meet the top and then clamp all the way around. All right, let's close it up. I like to start at the top, making sure that I hold the top part of my lining out of the way. All right, lining's done. To assemble the lining, we're gonna do the same as we did before. You're gonna place your side pieces, right sides touching with the bottom panel, sew together at one fourth of an inch seam allowance, bend it towards the bottom panel, and top stitch at one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Grab one of your lining panels right side up, take your gusset right side down, and line them up at the center mark, and start pin pinning from the center up. I'm gonna cut some snips for my corners, pin, for the lining, we're going to start and end with a seam allowance of 1 fourth inch, but when you get towards the middle, go ahead and increase it to half an inch. Make sure that you leave about a 5 inch opening in one of your linings for you to turn the bag out. Trim down your gusset. Okay, now grab both pieces 
and insert the exterior bag right side out into the lining wrong side out and make sure that the zipper pocket is towards the back of the bag. So now the right sides of both pieces should be touching each other. Make sure that you tuck that handle in. And the flap too. Let's attach our lining to our exterior panel, um, starting at the centerpiece. Go ahead and match up the center pieces first and then go over to the sides where the gusset starts and ends and connect it there and then make your way around the entire top of the bag. All right, let's turn her out. Okay, go ahead and roll those seams between your fingers. You know, try to get the seams as smooth as possible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my hammer and try to flatten it out a little bit more, especially those areas where the gusset meets up with the main panels. It tends to get a little chunky right there, so I'm going to flatten it out a little bit. Um, you know, just do what you feel comfortable doing. I'm going to clamp around the top and then top stitch at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. I just decided that I wanted to add a stabilizer to my gusset. So yeah, I cut the stabilizer piece about three and a half inches by 26 inches. All right, back to top stitching. I am using a little bit of fabric glue to get my stabilizer secured to the gusset. This is me deciding that I wanna add edge coat to the top of my tassel because I don't like the way that it looks right there from the top. <laughs> I'm so annoying sometimes. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna hop on over to my straps. Grab an adjuster, go ahead and place your webbing up and over. Bend it over so that you don't have any exposed pieces showing. Uh, if you like, it's your preference. I'm gonna bend it over twice so that um, it's tucked under there and then I'm just gonna go and do a seam right there. If you want to add a rivet, you can do that too. Okay, with the right side facing up, you're going to take your strap and just run it from the top through your rectangular ring. And then you're gonna bring it back up through the bottom of your adjuster and through the top. And then you're gonna go over from the top angle through that second rectangular ring and then fold the bottom. Uh, like again, I'm gonna fold it over twice so that there's no exposed pieces showing and then I'm gonna do another seam or a rivet. All right, let's add some rivets. Cute. All right, let's close this baby up. Pin and stitch it closed at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. All right, tuck her in and let's get this tassel on. All right, cut out your tassel piece. And for the little pieces, I just used my ruler and just move it down and just continue to cut. I didn't measure it or anything. Get your double-sided tape on. So you're gonna start off with the tassel piece upside down. And then, I'm not gonna try to talk you through it, just watch. Fold that piece down to the line. Fold that bottom piece up. And then just wrap the rest of the fabric around. 
It says that this tassel pattern came from Sewn Ideas. I think her name is Vivi. So I just want to say thank you, girl. This is too cute. Very cool. And I'm just going to snip that little extra piece left over. All right, let's get a rivet put on her and we're done.